11th of December 2018. The news headline. The Sudanese imposter should discredit Namti Kanu's reports by submitting himself for DNA test. Considering the abounding scientific evidences being meticulously advanced by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, worldwide, through her crack media teams of ardent professionals, one cannot but believe the obvious surrounding the Sudanese imposter sitting over the affairs of Nigeria. There exists mounting and irrefutable proofs indicting the infiltrator contracted by also rock based Fulani Cabals, that he remains late Buhari body double fronting himself as the president of Nigeria. He therefore has to submit himself to DNA forensic evaluation side by side with late Buhari's son, Yusuf Buhari, which has to be carried out by a reliable independent foreign medical personnel. This test, of course, is to holistically determine the veracity of the claims by the supreme leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, worldwide, Mazi Namti Kanyu. The DNA when conducted, will serve as the final antidote to the array of the present ongoing diplomatic image ridiculing of Nigeria, globally. The only redemptive option available to the Nigerian government, the criminal cabals in Aso Rock and the entire Fulani oligarchy in Nigeria is to immediately submit the Sudanese imposter and Yusuf Buhari for a simultaneous DNA test to ascertain the claims of the IPOB leader about the personality of the Nigerian president. He has steadily and unmistakably been speaking from the state of Israel for over a month now and has been providing irrefutable proofs at his disposal, to buttress his claims before the civilized international community about the unforgivable crime of the Nigerian government. This criminality was orchestrated against humanity since 27th of January 2017, when this Sudanese impersonator was contracted to act as the Nigerian president following the demise of Muhammadu Buhari. Now that Mazin M.T. Kenya has successfully created the enabling environment for the global community to initiate detailed inquiries into this jubilant saga, the world is equally under obligation to compel the Nigerian government to duly respect this position by unambiguously submitting the imposter for DNA test. The urgent need attached is premised on the fact that the Nigeria has criminally used this Sudanese nationale to ridicule and cast aspersion on the sensitivity of world leaders in two respective meetings of the United Nations General Assembly. Recall that this imposter was fronted as the Nigerian president to read addresses before the world leaders in United Nations General Assembly in 2017 and 2018 in deception. Issues relating to this Buhari impersonator would have been regarded as purely Nigeria internal affairs if he had not been used to deceive the world in various foras. But because of this undated personality at the United Nations General Assembly of 2017 and 2018 respectively in New York City, coupled with the International Criminal Court's 20 years anniversary of adoption of Rome Statute in Hague, Netherlands, the concerned world leaders known for their aversion for evil, must rise up and redeem their already battered reputation via the immediate and conscientious unraveling of this organized crime. They cannot continue to play international politics based on sovereignty of nations and keep watching the Nigerian government employ the usage of a Sudanese imposter to deceive the world. No. Nigeria must not go scot-free. Never. The deception was really nauseating and highly profiled, in that a classical personality like the President of the United States of America, Mr. Donald John Trump, was made to grant elaborate reception on 30th of April 2018, on invitation to the White House, to this imposter who appeared in the mold of a Nigerian president. The Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, Russian President, Vladimir Putin, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Theresa May, and German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, were all deceived as they received this jubil as Nigerian President, in the city of New York during the General Assembly of the United Nations which they all attended on two separate occasions, as plotted by the full on the Islamic-controlled government of Nigeria. It is expedient therefore in the light of this revelation, that these world leaders unanimously demand that the presidency dutifully submit him for a detailed DNA test, the result of which must be made public to serve as a punitive measure against future offenders. But if these world leaders fail in their duty to tenaciously escort this matter to its logical conclusion, 
the fool on the Islamic fundamentalists in Nigeria under the leadership of their caliphate will definitely regard them as idiotic and lacking in intellectualism. Five friends are eagerly and patiently awaiting to see the step the international community would want to take in.